What's up guys? Have you ever got that feeling that your teacher hates you? Well, if you ever get a problem like this and they're asking you to find the slope, that might be some that might mean that something's up and they're pretty mad or maybe they just want to test your skills. But either way, I want to go through this video and kind of help you along when you're trying to find slope with fractions because I can make this problem really really easy. And the way to make this problem really really easy is to make sure they all have the same denominators, right? So if I had like something like this um, and then subtract three fourths and then comma like a, I don't know, two halves, then you say, all right, that's rather easy, right? Because again, when you just remember when you are subtracting fractions, if I had like three fifths minus one fifth, right? The denominator, as long as the denominator is the same, you just apply the operation to the numerator and voila, you're on your way. So look for problems with fractions. If you do have the same denominators for your X's and you do have denominators for your Y's, then you're just subtracting fractions and it's really not that difficult. The reason why this problem is difficult is notice that none of my fractions have the common denominators. So when I apply my slope formula, I'm going to have to get common denominators. Now, it's not really more difficult. <laughs> I mean, it's not like crazy difficult. But again, sometimes it's just tedious because we're going to have to subtract fractions in our numerator as well as in our denominator. And then we notice we have an integer here. And you're like, wait a minute, we have fractions, and then the teacher's giving me an integer. Well, again, just remember, we can always rewrite a whole number as an integer. Okay, so now let's go back through and remember, like, what is our slope formula? So if I want to find slope, that's the change in my y over the, I'm sorry. Yeah, the change in the y over the change in the x. So I'm going to do y2 minus y1 all over ax2 minus an x1. Okay, so let's label our x and our y. So x1, y1, and let's do an x2 and y2. Okay, so again, so let's go ahead and figure this out. Now, all I'm going to do is plug this in. So I'll have a 2 over 1 minus a one half. And then over here, I'm going to do a three fourths minus a one third. Okay. So I'm actually going to separate this a little bit, or I'm going to move this out a little bit just to give myself a little bit more room. Okay. So again, we got to subtract fractions that don't have common denominators. So what we got to do is get common denominators. All right. So just remember guys, what you want to do is you want to find the least common denominator. And that's going to be the smallest number that both of your denominators are going to evenly divide into. And what you're basically doing is looking for multiples of those numbers. So if you look at like one and two, like what is the smallest number that one and two both divide into? Well, two divides into two. Does one divide into two? Yes, it does. But two does not evenly divide into one. So the LCD in my numerator here is going to be a two. Another way to look at this is just to multiply them. Like one times two is two. That means they both divide into two. And that is the smallest. Now this already has a two in my denominator. So I don't need to do anything over there. But over here, I need to multiply by two over two in the numerator and the denominator. You got to make sure you do it in the numerator and the denominator to keep what we call equivalent fractions. Okay. So you got to produce the same fraction, right? You can't just like multiply in the denominator or multiply in the numerator. Then you're going to have a, the ratio is going to be off. Now, what about my denominator? Now on this one, yeah, you could say like four times three, like that's 12. That's the, that is a common denominator, but is that the smallest? And actually in this case it is right. And again, like just because you multiply them does not always give you the common denominator. For instance, like six and three multiply to give you 18, but 18 is not the least common denominator, right? Six is the least common denominator. So another thing, if you just like kind of get, you know, confused, just list the multiples, just list the multiples of those numbers and three, six, nine, 12. And you can say, Oh, okay. I see how 12 is the smallest multiple of my two denominators. Right. But a quick way to kind of like check it is, is yeah, just to multiply them and then make sure and then then check to see if that is actually the smallest number that works. So my least common multiple in this case is 12. So what I need to do is create or obtain a 12 um, with a one third. So to do that, I'm going to multiply by four in the denominator. So therefore I have to multiply four in the numerator. Over here, I'm going to multiply by three in the denominator and then a three in the numerator. So now what I get, M is equal to a, let's see, this is going to be a four halves minus a one half. And then over here, I'm going to get a nine twelfths minus a four twelfths. So remember that original problem I was talking about, like when you're subtracting your fractions, so I, didn't write, oh, I didn't write that. I deleted it. Dang it. Um, remember whenever your denominators are the same guys, you can just subtract your numerators. Like that's what you get. So in this case, I can just now subtract a four minus one. So M equals a four minus one, which is going to be a three. And then that's over two. And then in this case, I have a nine minus four, which is going to be a five divided by 12. And you say, all right, there's your slope, but your teacher's probably not going to like that as your slope. And I think, especially if we had to like graph that uh, or do anything like that, like they'd be kind of confusing. 
So the other thing I want you to think about this is this is really a three halves divided by five twelfths, right? Remember this, it's like three halves divided by five twelfths. Now, hopefully you remember, like when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, like how can you rewrite that? You can rewrite it as a product, right? You can say this is a three halves times a, oops, you got to flip it, times the reciprocal, which is 12 over a five. So to simplify this, I can now say this is a three halves times a 12 over five. And now let's go ahead and simplify this. So now you can see that my two divides into a 12, six times, three times 16 is going to be an eight over five. That cannot be simplified anymore, but now that is your slope and we're all over. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.